Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back for chapter four of 2 Corinthians. Man, I apologize on missing the past day or so last week. We actually have a five month old right now who's struggling to sleep through the night. So things have been a little rough in the Pearsall household as of late. Gonna make it, but I would really value your prayers for us, especially my wife. She's a trooper, but we all get tired. All right, well, let's jump into this. You're watching the Bible vlog. <music> chapter, Paul points out a really important truth that is so important in understanding why people do or do not come to faith in Christ. Look at verses 3 through 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Now, a couple of things here. Notice that Paul calls Satan the God of this age. Now what Paul said is true. The devil is the one who has been given full authority here on earth. Now, he doesn't have authority over believers, but remember when Satan tempted Jesus and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment? What did he say to him? That all of the authority for those kingdoms had been relinquished to him, but he would give it to Jesus if he would just bow down and worship him. Now, Jesus, of course, rebuked Satan using the word of God, but remember that he never disputed what the devil said. It's because it was true. Satan is the one running the show here on the earth, which is why you see such awful things taking place in it. And just like this passage says, he is the one blinding the minds of people to the truth of the gospel. Now, people still choose whether or not they will believe, but the devil eagerly works on people to blind them to the truth. Okay, now skip ahead a little bit. This one's a little bit of a shorter chapter, but the last few verses are really powerful. Go to verses 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at things which are are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now this section really deals with what we might call seeing the invisible. Paul points out that everyone's physical body ultimately gets old and begins to break down. It's just part of being human. But inwardly, our spirit, or what Paul calls the inner man, is being renewed by the Holy Spirit. Now what's fascinating is how much time and attention we ultimately end up giving to our temporary man when it's our inward man who will live forever. I mean, I'll be honest, eternity is a hard thing to imagine. But to try and even compare eternity to just say a hundred years, there's no comparison. Yet because of our current state, we place such an emphasis on only earthly things that it sometimes becomes easy to forget the greater purpose. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, put God first. When you focus on Him, His plans, and what He wants you to do, it's not only where you find the ultimate fulfillment, but everything else in your life begins to fall into place. Remember the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. All right, guys, well, that is gonna do it for us today with chapter four. A short one, but a good one as we keep going in 2 Corinthians. Thank you all for being here and enduring with me while we try and get some sleep. Hope you'll be back tomorrow for chapter 5 as we're moving right along. Till tomorrow, be good. You know I love you guys. We will see you back here tomorrow. Now to try and sleep. Mm -hmm.